look, I'm, I'm 43 years old, I'm fat and I'm overweight. Who am I gonna fight? Really, be honest. Fight fans, welcome back. Well, greatness is when you make your delusions your reality. Something that's just totally unbelievable to the human imagination. Until now, the pre-fight buildup has felt somewhat manufactured. Jake's been pushing buttons. There's a reason why I have the same birthday as Customato, because I'm gonna teach you how to box, Mike. And Mike, so far, has refused to bite. I can't even get mad at this guy, because everybody know this guy's talking out of his <laughs> It all seems like fun and games, right? Sure, at least for now. Jake Paul, Jake Paul. Jake. But if Jake Paul does cross the line even by an inch, this friendly setup, bubble wrapped in fight night stipulations, could quickly devolve into chaos. Mike Tyson is a caged animal who at, at any moment can explode into a murderous rage. After all, this is the same man that took swipes at police in a post-fight melee. It is complete bedlam and Tyson is just taking swipes at anybody in front of him and lunged at his bitter rival before the biggest fight of their lives. Tyson evicting Jake Paul's soul from his body is the outcome the majority seem to be hoping for. Mike Tyson's not losing to him. I can promise you that, Skip. So here we look at 10 reasons that Mike could pull off the most satisfying victory in boxing history. Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. Jake needs these guys. Jake what? needs Tyson and needs all these other people because that, that, you know, everybody's gonna tune in to hope that Mike Tyson knocks him out. Right. They're not tuning in because they think Jake Paul's a great fighter and they want to see him compete. Jake fought a guy who was his age and was also Tommy considered Fury. a boxer and he lost. So far, Jake has mainly feasted on an appetite of retired MMA fighters and non-boxers. When he did cross the line, albeit marginally in February last year, Tommy Fury showed the difference. It's all a joke. I'm ending you February 26th and you already know it. In the dressing rooms. I want clean fight, okay? Touch glove, go to the husband then, let's go. Cautious of any return fire, Jake found himself excessively hugging, clinching, and a lot more hesitant at range. Who did he knock out? Little, little children. He didn't knock out um, Tommy Fury. Tyson has spent a career in this position, being clung on to for dear life by fearful opponents. He's not listening to Rivera at all. He's just going to continue to hold until he just physically forces him out. Can't say I blame him. He will cut angles on the inside a lot more effectively than Fury. And if you put Mike in Tommy's place for that flurry at the end of round one, things probably end a lot differently. A good left hand as well, they come through. The first meaningful shot to the fight landed right at the end of the round. I don't know, I feel like that's kind of disrespectful of Jake, though. He's saying he wants to be a real boxer, but he's challenging these retired fighters or. This is like the first real boxer he really fought. Tommy Fury don't really count. <laughs> I was like hunkered over and I was like by his hip and he kind of had me in a headlock. He opens his glove and puts his hand over my mouth. When Jake's brother fought Floyd Mayweather back in 2021, he was surprised at all the subtle intricacies and veteran moves that kept Floyd one step ahead. He knew where the ref was, he knew to cover my mouth, straight up in the middle of the fight, I'm like, and I get up and I'm like, what the fuck? I just missed two breaths. Mid-fight game changers, some barely noticeable, that you can't really prepare for. In my head, I'm like, holy fucking shit, this is like one of those old school boxing tricks that you like hear about. And I missed the breath. I missed the breath. I got up like, whoa, that was crazy. And I'm sure he's got a thousand of those up his sleeve. We're getting to see strange things happen in boxing. As another elite level operator, Mike has seen it all before against bigger, stronger, and more dangerous men. So whether it's some of those questionable tactics on the inside, or whether it's an ability to throw off Jake's game plan and make him fight scared, it's almost certain that Tyson will have a trick or two up his sleeve. It's all about the experience of being in the ring, fighting. It's all about getting comfortable with the ring. That's what experience is about. There's nothing to lose for Tyson. 
If he wins, like, people are going to thank him. Thank you for ending this charade, they're going to say. The strongest I've ever seen you. Yeah? Yeah, the strongest I've ever, and I know you since you're 13. We've heard it a million times that power is the last thing to go. He can, he can still kick some ass. That's, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> and whilst it's debatable, it has been proven in certain cases by some age-defiant veterans of the past. And I'm proud of myself and it's showing the world that the age 50 is not a death sentence for an athlete. You can pursue excellence as long as you want, not when people say it. So where Mike's danger factor remains, Jake's margin for error, especially early on, is minimal. What happens when Jake Paul gets in trouble against a real-life killer? Additionally, the problem child is certainly not without flaws. He's faced criticism surrounding his footwork and displayed a tendency to drop his hands. We've seen you punch. Eyes closed half, half the time. Half your knockouts, your eyes just closed. You just throwing a haymaker. That shit ain't working on Mike Tyson, man. So if Jake doesn't take this quite as seriously as he should or suffers a split-second lapse of concentration, it's curtains on November 15th. Actually fighting a guy who finally, I know he's, he's much older than him, but is naturally the bigger guy. In his move up to heavyweight, Jake will be coming in 20 pounds heavier than usual. And I'm only growing, you know, like I think I'll get up to 240 and then probably cut down so I'm like, way faster. The 220 pound version won't look as ripped and won't be as mobile as the man who faced Mike Perry. And whilst his punches will undoubtedly carry a little more thud, the power doesn't often follow fighters upwards quite as dramatically as they expect. And Jake Paul is about 200 pounds. He's got about 20 pounds. Are difference. you kidding me? He's only 200? Oh, gee. It's worse than I thought. That was his last fight. First on the scales, the most famous athlete in the world, Mike Tyson. Weight-wise, Tyson will be roughly the same, but his body is used to maneuvering at this weight and used to handling far bigger and stronger frames than Jake's. But the first thing I notice is he's built like a beast man. He just looked like he weighs 300 pounds, but he's short, but he's tall. He's like a giant wolf. The body work of Another factor that aids the older, more experienced fighter is timing. Now the old Tyson's not completely gone, is he? He bites the glove and comes around with an overhand right. Punch resistance, speed, and reflexes certainly won't favor the 58-year-old, but crafty veterans are able to predict movements, force mistakes, and capitalize. You know, he's been in there with the best, he knows what it takes, and, and Jake Paul, is, he's too inexperienced, I think. I think Mike Tyson is gonna catch him and stop him. So even if Jake carries his weight well and comes in razor sharp, Tyson will make his own moments count. He has the size to cause ball. Oh, there he is. Punch of the fight from Tyson. He still has that where he can weave, he can slip, he, he can create the openings to give himself the possibility to unload a bomb on your chin and get yep. you out of there. Mike's always been one of the best students of the game since his tutelage under Cus Demato. So with a built-in calmness and ability to think under pressure, he'll also know when to pounce and how to catch Jake crossing his feet. Hey, let me just be honest, he's improved a lot. Yes, he did improve a lot, but he's not gonna have a good night when he fights me on July 20th. Mike was throwing hard shots, devastating shots to Roy's body. Again, I was I was living the, the 1980s through this 50-year-old Mike Tyson. I wasn't able to be around at that time, so this is my, my opportunity to live that. now. When Mike fought Roy Jones back in 2020, a no knockout clause left a lot of people underwhelmed. I really, really wanted the old Tyson that he's like, I, I haven't slept with my wife in, in a year. He goes, I don't care if I live or die. That's the Tyson I wanted to see. I wanted to see him to be ferocious. The muscle memory was evident for both, but many felt that Mike could have ended it whenever he wanted. He still has that, that sort of innate power mm -hmm. when he went at Roy Jones body he was rocking his right. body and Roy Jones woke up on Sunday morning a sore older man at 51 years of age absolutely the rope the referee told me let him go you think I'm gonna let this crazy <laughs> man go <laughs> He was not letting it happen listen have you seen what his uppercut has done to people twice my size <laughs> Bobbing and weaving his way in, finding angles, 
only to pull his punches when in range. That's two hard right hands dug into the body by Mike Tyson. The post-fight recollections, however, where Roy credits just how dangerous and switched on Mike is, even at this age, makes you question what version Jake might actually be fighting. Do you not fear a little bit for, for Mike and how old he is? No, I don't fear for Mike and how old he is. Mike's a very rugged guy. You know, when I was in there with Mike, Mike still was hard to hit, and Mike still can hit hard as hell. That's the real question. How much can Jake survive? That's the real question. Does that get you nervous? Thinking about like the fight getting closer? Um, it's a good nervous. It's like excited, but with, with a slight bit of worry, yeah. Fortunately, Tyson versus Paul doesn't have a no knockout stipulation that we know of, and Jake Paul isn't Roy Jones. Mike still got it, so he hits him, he's going down. You think he knocks him out over there? I don't know, I don't know how nice Mike will be, but if the killer Mike goes in there, yeah, he's putting him down. So whilst everything we've seen so far has felt relatively manufactured, the second it's not, and the moment it steps a little bit beyond the confines of entertainment, is the moment things get a lot more interesting. You know, I have to be the mean guy though, in order for me to perform the way I perform. I have to, I have to have that aura. Mike, you're jumping around, you seem to be a little anxious. I'm just ready to get it on and crush this guy's skull. The respect is there, but Tyson won't be taken for a fool. So whether we see a genuine mean streak revival from the man who used to target his opponent's nose bone with gruesome intentions could make all the difference. What is that feeling like when you f***ing take your fist and you f***ing pound someone to the point that they pass out? It's like drugs. Right. It's like drugs. It gives you everything you want. Yes. But it takes back so much more in return. Fighters are, are different than any other human being on earth. And the greats, the greats, the best of the best, that's who they are. That's how they're built to the core. Mike Tyson! Expanding on the power retention theory, and despite being a shell of his former self, Jake has still never been hit by someone who punches like Mike. So that's when why. When he got in that ring, he had to show Mike right away. Because he said, if you show that you're scared of Mike, he will demolish you. Right, as soon as he sees it. But he's he like, a pit fucking, he like a pit bull. Silva, Perry, and Woodley could all crack, but MMA power and boxing power just aren't the same. So the time you spent to get really, really great at striking would be time not spent addressing the clinch and grappling, which would be a much more higher yield use of your time. So that's why I think MMA fighters generally grapple better than they strike. It's because it's smart for them to do that. The technique and skill required to land the punches quite as effectively is what's missing. But where the boxers excel is the art of boxing, being able to land those punches in the right spots at the right time. Tommy had ways of setting his power up, and Jake didn't like it. Good start to the round here from Tommy Fury. So if or when Mike actually lands clean on Jake, even in 16 ounce gloves, the problem child might be in some trouble of his own. All Iron Mike Tyson needs to do is look as good or better than Tommy Fury to give Jake Paul some huge problems. Paul lose, then it's all over. Yeah, all this party's over. over, and then we're not gonna have this much fun again. <laughs> some sort of shape to be able to deal with this kid. He's convinced it happens, and it, like Mike can choose his time whenever he wants, and it'll be that easy. A good game plan, especially when the stakes are high, can make all the difference. But if a larger and more muscle-bound Jake Paul is packing on extra size in hope of beating Mike at his own game, then he might be barking up the wrong tree. Mike Tyson is pretty, pretty straightforward technique to counter him. And to me, that's, that's exciting and, and gives me a lot of confidence. Instead, his best interests lie in the deeper waters of this eight round showcase. What's Jake Paul gonna do if Tyson hits him in the body? I think the only thing Jake is probably banking on is taking Tyson in deep waters because he's older. That's, that's the only thing I can see. For Mike, it's quite the opposite. Those five second training snippets, despite being impressive, aren't realistic and they don't tell the full story. Those tiny little three second clips. Anyone can look good for three second clips, especially someone like Mike Tyson. What they do show, however, is Tyson's path to victory. 
and that's a split second burst of something Jake's never really seen. Say what you want, this crowd rose as one and gave him a massive ovation. The Tyson phenomenon is still alive. Tell us what you think is going to happen in this fight and where you think it's leading for you. Well, I'm in great shape and I'm just looking forward to doing some serious damage. Mike wouldn't come into the fight if he had nothing to offer, but helping to guide Ngannou to that success against Tyson Fury will remind him of what can be done using that all-important element of surprise. No matter how the fight goes, let's let's don't forget this can't really fight. And similarly, all the pressure will be falling onto the shoulders of his opponent. It's gonna be action. It's gonna be a firefight, more punches, and it's gonna be a sprint in there, so I think it's more entertaining for the fans. The majority feel that the opening 60 seconds is Mike's window to capitalize. So in that respect, it's just like the Mike Tyson fights of old. You need to get your popcorn ready, drink in hand, and just don't blink.